So just a brief note on how we name things so that we can communicate clearly. When we talk about the strings of the guitar, the thinnest string is the first string, always, never the, sick, the thick one. So this is the first string, the next thinnest is second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. And if you remember that, and I use those numbers, then it'll be very easy for you to hear which string I'm telling you to play on. You should also know the names of the strings, the notes they are, in, a, in standard tuning. And the low bass string is E, the fifth string is A, the fourth string is D, the third string is G, the, f the second string is B, and the first string is another E. So the bottom and top strings are the same note, two octaves apart. And then you just memorize that, E, A, D, G, B, E. Then if I say, oh, play this on the D string, if I say that instead of the fourth string, then you'll still know which string I mean. Okay, here we go. And what we're going to do is, um, uh, I'm just going to go with our first shape of two fingers here. And we're going to show you how to turn those into the three basic chords in the key of C. Chords. Now a chord has three notes. Um, a, a major triad is what we're going to start out with. And these are the chords that most people learn when they start to play folk music. So if you have these two notes, actually to make a complete C chord, all you need is the open third string, the G string. But if you put your index finger down on the first fret of the second string, then you have a chord all the way across the guitar. Now when we say there are three notes, we mean there are three different pitches, but they may be repeated. So in this chord, we have C, E, G, C, E. So there's two of those. Not a big deal right now, but just so you know. Here's your C chord. If you keep your index finger here and move your little unit over one string, these three strings, the fourth, third, and second, are a complete F chord. Now many people are flummoxed by the F chord because they think they have to bar two strings with their index finger like this. And of course you should learn to do that, but you should also know that this is a complete F chord. So if you're playing a song and you wanted to go to your F chord, you could just do this and just hit those three strings in other strings later on. So you have C, you keep your index finger here and move your unit over and you have F. Now anytime you're practicing a new chord, the best way to learn it and get it into your muscle memory is to toggle it with another chord. So if you, for example, already knew your C chord, then the best way to learn your F chord would be to go C, F, C, F, C, F. When you first do that, we wanted to get these two fingers, these two middle fingers, to work as a unit, to move together. And uh, um, when you first start doing this, you may find that you have to do move these over and then place this separately. You may not be able to do everything at once. But at some point, you have to make this leap where you go from doing this to, to putting all three fingers down at once. And it takes a lot of repetitions and a lot of practice. When you're practicing these first two chords, a C and an F, it would be great if you picked up all three fingers and put them back down again. But if you can't do that at first, you could get your C chord down and then leave your index finger where it is and just move the other two. And then for the G chord, all you have to do is move this bunch over, like we did in the first lesson, lift up your index finger. If you do not use the first string, you've got a complete G chord here on these five. If you get your little finger down on the third fret of the high string, then you have a six string G chord. And you could toggle that with your C. You could go C, G, C. G. And when you do that, practice one strum per chord. Just go, because you want to uh, get it to where you can do that back and forth really quickly. It 
may take you a couple days or, or even a week of practicing this for several minutes at a time. Um, and once you have that, you'll have C. You want to practice C, F, C, F, C, F, C, C, G, C, G, C, G, C. And then you could practice F, G, F, G, where these two fingers, your unit, will move over all the way two strings, all the way to the bass. So here it's on the third and fourth strings, and here it's on the fifth and sixth strings. So you could train that as a separate exercise. Okay, and we're going to go by baby steps, so this is enough for one lesson. Trying to get your C, F, and G chord. Have fun with it.